So how would I prepare Elon Musk for the cage fight with Mark Zuckerberg? Great question that I want to answer in this video. Now, everything that you're going to see is based upon the knowledge that I was able to gather from the books that I've read. One of the books is The Training of the Weightlifter by R.A. Roman. And the second is The Secrets of Russian Sports Fitness and Training by Dr. Michael Yeses. I've had Dr. Michael Yeses on the podcast, which was a great discussion. I've also had the person who translated The Training of the Weightlifter by R.A. Roman. His name is Andrew Bud Jarniga. Also, on the podcast so i've learned a lot from these guys so let's dive right into it let's jump right into the prep now first things first before i would even start prepping anybody or elon musk in this case i would want to gather a couple of folks because i don't think that doing this by myself would lead to the perfect results. So I would talk to a proficient MMA coach. I would talk to a biomechanics specialist. I would consider myself then the conditioning expert. And maybe I would even include a an endurance expert who preps folks for marathon running and stuff. So I think one of the most important aspects of preparing people or, or working with athletes and prepping somebody to be able to perform well at a competition, it's supposed to be a combination of more people, more knowledge, and most of the time, if I specialize on one particular aspect of this niche that I have specialized in, I need knowledge from other places as well. So here's what I would set up the phases. So we have four phases. First one is the GPP phase. The second one is the SPP phase. The third one is the competitive phase. And the final one is the transitional phase. This is a typical ex-Soviet approach, how they would prepare their athletes. The time per phase depends on the fight date. So for example, you know that the fight day is in a couple of months. I would divide these phases into these different time slots. So let's check out the GPP phase. And, and just for you to understand, GPP stands for General Physical Preparation. So what's the primary objective of this phase? We want to prime the body for advanced training. If you have a deconditioned individual, like I'm assuming Elon Musk maybe is, then we have to dedicate a lot of time to the GPP to have this person up and running for the rigorous training that he is about to face. And we also want to acquire proficiency in MMA exercises, techniques, and fundamentals. So it's not just about the training or getting fitter and stronger and faster. It's also about already or incorporating as fast as possible the techniques that he's supposed to learn on the mat as well as in the weight room. The protocol would be four workouts per week and I would divide these four workouts into three sessions within the weight room and one session on the training mat. What is the weight room emphasis? We want to imply, uh, employ light weights with high uh, rep ranges to hone the technique. We cannot just start right away with heavy weights and, and get get to work because a you probably have a deconditioned individual and b this person has to learn the techniques first so what are we going to focus on we're going to focus on strength with a couple of exercises like the back squat the deadlift and the bench press and then we want to focus on power and strength endurance with the swing the clean and press the snatch and the get up and then we have some stamina, endurance work, your typical stuff, running, skiing, swimming, and rowing. And it's a dedicated emphasis on meticulous exercise technique refinements. I would dedicate at least four workouts to this phase. So we have workout A would be strength. So the focus, like I mentioned, is back squat, deadlift, bench press. Then we'll, I would maybe say 10 reps for each exercise. And then we do four to five rounds of four to five sets. Workout B, it's power, strength, endurance, and the mental capacity. This is where I would opt in for kettlebells. One thing that the kettlebell does is it touches all important bases of human performance, flexibility, mobility, power, strength, muscle, and mental capacity. When you work with kettlebells, you will be challenged mentally to a very high degree. And the moves that I would choose is the swing, the clean and press, and the snatch. Then I would choose a duration for two minutes per exercise on a continuous basis. Unbroken, we call this, and then we, had, we would probably do four cycles. Now, if you start with somebody 
who is training for the first time, who's doing swings for the first time, I would still set the timer for two minutes and then work with the person and have him or her drop the weight. In this case, it, it would be Elon Musk. So Elon would work on the swings and then drop the weight, relax, relax, recuperate, and then get back at it. I wouldn't expect Elon to perform two minutes of continuous exercise on the get-go, but it would still be a, a goal that we would want to achieve. Then in workout C, we would combine all these exercises, get up the back squat, the deadlift bench, Press, uh, bench press clean and press and then we would do 10 reps for each exercise and it will be a circuit training so it's combining everything all together kind of like more of a conditioning circuit and maybe three or four cycles or rounds and then i would also opt in typical endurance exercises like running rowing skiing and cycling i'm reading a book right now it's called the cardio code by kenneth j and he emphasizes the importance that if you want to build proper endurance, you have to do these locomotion activities like rowing, skiing and running because strength training is will not build your endurance even though your heart rate will be elevated this does not lead to an improved cardiovascular endurance but that's a different topic so endurance has to be in here as well so it will be low intensity steady state some list cardio and of course high intensity interval training and this is where i would ask the guidance of a professional conditioning specialist when it comes to endurance and i would work with him or her to improve this system and very important before we jump into the next phase is you want to understand that everything that's done on the mat with the mma coach the actual important stuff is nothing that i have a say in so i don't know what the athlete requires on the mat and we're going to talk about this in a second but the work that the athlete has to do on the map is with the mma coach and that's why i have to be in close contact with the MMA coach and with the biomechanics which we want to talk about right now so now what follows is the SPP phase it's called the specific preparatory phase so the primary objective objective would be to execute sport relevant exercises for applicability this means maybe i would have to talk to the mma coach and then ask him hey what does the athlete require on the mat and then i would talk to the biomechanist the biomechanist would then tell me okay these are the joint actions that the athlete has to take in order to perform better on the mat and then i would use these sport relevant exercises or maybe we would experiment with sport relevant exercises so that the athlete or elon in that case becomes better at the movement action that he's required on the mat and we would engage in a precision intensive phase to elevate mma fighting proficiency so this is where the mma coach comes in this is his turf now so protocol would be four workouts still three sessions but now everything changes it's 80 percent done on the mat and 20 percent is done in the weight room so three sessions on the mat and one session in the weight room the emphasis will be mat work involves innovative trails under the guidance of the mma coach that's why it's important we have to be in this triangle the MMA coach, me, as well as the biomechanist, we have to talk with each other and learn from each other and see how we can improve. And then utilizing heavy weights, low repetitions, max intensity, and concentrated explosive emphasis. So this is what he would do with me in the weight room. And these are the exercises and the workouts. So I would use uh, two workouts. Workout A would be divided into two phases. In phase one, we would do back squat, deadlift, bench press, and get up. Sets and reps would be three sets of three to five reps. And we would use significant resistance for a low rep range. So heavy weights only. And then we would have to get up, swing, clean, and press, and snatch in the in phase two so the duration would be one minute or 10 reps per exercise and the weight selection would be utilizing substantial weights again even with kettlebells heavy get-ups heavy swings heavy clean and press and heavy snatches with workout b we would do cardiovascular training again or just focusing on your endurance would be running rowing skiing cycling and we would incorporate again low intensity steady state and high intensity interval training sessions optional i would also maybe opt in for depth jumps to build explosiveness if that's an important requirement on the mat just comes to mind i've also seen steve carter my sensei incorporate some interesting exercises for his mma work or for his jiu-jitsu work if that is important if it is a cage fight where it's also about striking and fighting we also have to understand what does the athlete require in order to improve his his uh, standing game not just his ground game then we have the competitive phase now this 
this is the crunch phase this is important now with spp we're already dialing up it's already going to the roof that's why you need a gpp phase if you jump into the spp right away you will die because you don't have built you haven't built up the fitness and the stamina and the endurance and the strength that is required to jump into this spp phase and now with the competitive phase it's balls to the wall so we have the primary objective consisting out of du a dual phase we want to obtain peak readiness for an authentic mma bout so i want to prepare you for the actual task at hand phase one would be an acc acclimatization to the competitive arena and phase two would be an intensified preparation for the full-fledged encounter and this is where important where i'll have to talk to the mma coach again how does he have to prepare what do you think he needs when it comes to the mental capacity do we have to work a little bit do we have to throw in some kettlebells to build this mental capacity but this is most of the time this will be the mma's coach turf again and you see in the protocol i don't know how how many workouts this would take because everything would be focused on the mat now we want to unleash optimal performance so engaging in full contact matches with appropriate protective gear probably i'm not sure on this i would have to talk to the mma coach and now this is important we would cease further modifications to strength and fitness aspects so it's no more building strength no more building fitness if you haven't built your strength and your fitness now in the competitive phase which is right before the bout then you have already lost we don't want to mess with your neuromuscular system because now everything's dialed in and now we don't want to change uh, nothing of these parameters in order to uh, improve so it's mat based training again you have four rigorous workouts on the training mat maybe i'm just writing four but you see the uh, the the question mark i don't know maybe the mma set coach says hey two are enough three are enough or maybe we have to do five or every day i don't know and then finally after the bout is done we have the transitional phase so what you want to do then or what Elon Musk would have to do then is a rejuvenating activity, something that really refreshes you, that really heals your body. It's all about recuperation, rehabilitative endeavors. Maybe, you know, in a fight you, you get hurt or you injure yourself. Then you want to rehabilitate. You want to explore alternative sports. You want to play some volleyball, some soccer, some football. Or maybe not football is maybe a little bit too tough. But stuff that really um, changes up your brain to come out of this intense period and then you want to un unwind and recharge and what i also think is fascinating you want to shift in your surroundings if you have been training in the city then now you maybe want to go to the mountain side or maybe to the lake side and do some training right there or maybe just some unwinding and this transitional phase is limited to 20 to 30 days so here you go this is how we'll prepare elon musk for a fight based upon these four important phases that ex-soviet athletes used to prepare for and they were like monsters these principles were applied to all kinds of different sports but i think it doesn't matter what kind of sport it is you always have a gpp a phase where you have to prepare your fitness and your body a spp phase where you want to become more specific with the techniques and use heavier weights and go all out then you have the competitive phase where it's all about now focusing on the task at hand what is the task that you have when you want to compete and then transition to let your body recuperate and then get back at it again so thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video like it consider subscribing and if you made it this far consider joining the house of stock and become a labor stock member exclusive workouts follow along workouts skill lessons everything that pertains to kettlebell training it's the netflix of kettlebells our powerful membership and everything that you've dreamed of it's the perfect membership for kettlebells if you want to get in shape build a strong body build a resilient body and free up time because kettlebells don't take up a lot lot of time and they touch all bases of human performance so click the link right here if you're interested to join the house of shark